First time that a space like this has been convened in South Africa, where people across different sectors are talking in different ways about agroecology. So I recognize here that we have uh, people from different provinces of South Africa. We also have uh, people from other parts of uh, Africa and uh, worldwide as well. I would like to welcome you all here. When I think agroecology, the bottom line is about relationship. How do we nurture the relationship between us and the seed? How do we nurture the relationship between the seed and the soil? Between the soil and the worm? Between the crop and the bee? All those barriers, relationships, interlinkages. For me, this is agroecology. And so we decided that this conference will need to walk the talk. So instead of just outsourcing to some professionals, we needed to include our local food producers and processors in what you are going to be doing at this conference. Hey, Um, <laughs> So, Loko Pusiza, any umdenuam, the Lompagate and a Kalena, Umpagate and a Kalena, we are the Utuma of Funa Uguja of Fresh Organic, Ugutif Bactola, Bactola, a Kayagim, Inganea Manja, a Kadila Umetrik Nayo, Ihambile, a Yosundela in the agriculture. So, Zoka Ingans, I'm the man seven and a son seven and a son. Chigalele, 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 Chigalele. What we want and we define by diversifying agroecological systems are systems that can deliver at the same time, simultaneously, on economic, environmental, health, social, and cultural dimensions. And that is really looking at that, all the dimensions of the food system. And so far, uh, the world is really dominated by an economic discourse, and all the other things are are considered by some as uh, unavoidable externalities, uh, and that has to change. What do we need to do? Policies must work together. We can no 
longer on the embrace agriculture. Agriculture must work together with land reform, social planning, environment, environment to do the right policies. I find people not only suffering from malnutrition, but I find their children are being affected by the consequences of malnutrition and uh, the most important one being poor cognitive abilities. Uh, so you've got this gap between people who are poor um, and people who have got access to food um, to the extent that uh, the knowledge base is uh, degenerating and more underdevelopment continues. And so this connection of things I refer to as an if you look at the whole world, we've got a challenge and um, South Africa is actually one of the countries that are going to have less than 50% of the food that is produced. And it's not going to affect everybody, it's going to affect mainly poor people. Agriculture and indigenous food knowledge, including now food preparation, shall be essential subjects at all grades of school, so that they mention the story that food is installed in person at a very young age. The role of the government to ensure the finance for food producers because we are food producers, although they don't want to acknowledge us. But I think I perceive that we play a major role. My, my uh, concern is that the city's approach to urban agriculture is very realistic and it sits in the sort of subsistence for the poor to grow their own garden, and then there's the commercial uh, and large scale aspect. I think as a city, unfortunately, it's not really, it wasn't really part of our core mandate. I mean, agriculture is very much provincial and a kind of national function. And I think we have struggled to grapple with the part of it on a city level. And I think that's the aspect that we now need to look at going forward. My name is Martha Chirala. I'm coming from Zambia, Lusaka, and I'm coming from an organization called Zambia Alliance for Agroecology and Biodiversity. Um, here, mainly to uh, learn about uh, agroecology and see what has been uh, documented about it, and yeah, basically learn and exchange information. very interested in incorporating art as a modality for this week, um, as a form of expression, as a form to get in other conversations that we aren't able to keep in this space. When we look at agroecology, there's so much happening and it's so uh, multifaceted. Um, and one of the areas that we thought we should highlight, because it often gets left off, is around insects especially the knowledge that gets passed on around insects. Um, and so we decided to kind of host this space specifically around those topics. So long live by watch, long live. Uh, and it's fantastic to see such a big crowd here today. Uh, and the theme of the environment is so important for all South Africans. Uh, it's marvelous to know that there are specialists, people, specialists not just with technique and, and good language and, and communications, but specialists in your hearts, in your vision, in your approach to the world. We just need, need it so much. I'm very thrilled to be invited. Good luck for the next 20 years. Agroecology is that service where kind of you get to summarize, analyze, and interpret findings and conclusions from farmers. So the intention was to really find out what the farmers have, what they are doing, and how they are doing it. So that is not top down, but it's bottom up. It will fit up on the line. The aim of us um, uh, being farmers is to empower our, our, our fellow people from, from the townships where we, where we stay. I think the deepest disconnection is the spiritual connection that we have with nature. 
So that's one of the things that Sky is also bringing back through our connection with ABN, um, which really focuses on that. And there's later sessions um, during the course of these three days where they will be more, they will go in deeper into that. But it's, um, it's that's just really, it's, I think, fundamental to what we need to heal is that um, connection with nature. I make juice every with all the vegetables. I got it my car. I call it monkey apple, but we call it amasala. That's fantastic, hey? Got a very nice history. <laughs> and this? You this be. is the jungle beans yeah. and the millies. Everything what I grow, I make flour, I make everything what I want to make with. Perfect. Yeah. It's from indigenous, but I got someone to help me if I stuck somewhere. This is Lawrence Mkalipi from Firewash. <laughs> because he knows me better because I'm a partner of them. I brought it all the way from uh, UK and come and thank you. What I've seen happen over the, the since in the 2000s is that people kind of really see agroecology as, as an umbrella for a lot of different activities. And I think it's been very good in that sense. It's brought a lot of people together that were perhaps working a little bit separately. Uh, we also need to learn through the wisdom of the old. I'm happy to be a youth and I'm happy to learn from old people because they are blessed with so much wisdom. So we need as youth and encouraging to take the opportunity to learn from the elders who are able to see something as they are sitting down and we can't see what they see when, when we are standing up. So we need to take that opportunity to learn from them. The issue of land is an essential one. Um, who owns the land, who has access to the land, who farms the land, uh, what uh, seed uh, people are able to use. Um, so the seed bowl is one that would need to be challenged. And I think that one of the biggest things is to have greater information. The one is to use the structures, to use the institutions. The other is to influence policy, ma policy making and policy choices and to make the connections in that between um, agriculture, food, health, uh, trade um, regulations and rules, and to also have global solidarity, because it, so to utilize both local solidarity, regional so solidarity, and, and internationally. <laughs> sowing the seeds in each of us and just continuing to create that underground subversive network. Another thing that I think agroecology does, it's a positive movement. It's not necessarily, it's about critiquing, but it's also about alternatives and looking forward. And I think that energizes people.